Hello everybody. Today we are going to discuss about conventional glass ionomer cements for restorative purposes. Let's talk about its history first. It was first introduced to dental fraternity by Wilson and McLean as a polyalkanoid cement. Later it was rechristened as glass ionomer cement basically because it contains the powder particles is made up of silica the other components in the powder are alumina sodium fluoride aluminum fluoride and some other proprietary agents the liquid is the first time when it was in used with polyacrylic acid it was a revolutionary change in dentistry with the introduction of polyacrylic acid which had the ability to chemically bond to the tooth structure so this was the first time that a cement was introduced which had tooth colored properties as well as a property to bond to the tooth structure now let's start start with the manipulation of this material every restorative material manufactured has got its own proprietary method of manufacturing so we must always follow the manufacturer's instructions it's always mentioned with the material here the manufacturer has mentioned one scoop of the powder goes with one drop of the liquid now the scoop has to be the one provided by the company and not any other scoop also the liquid provided by the company in the provided bottle should be used so that the amount of liquid dispensed in one drop is always same when we mix glass ionomer cement which is a conventional glass ionomer cement meant for restorative purpose the consistency of the mix is a little more thicker or more viscous compared to the cement mix used for luting consistencies here we are going to mix the cement for a restorative purpose i have taken out one scoop of the powder using the manufacturer provided scoop and the liquid is going to be dispensed in a particular fashion now it is important that we hold the bottle upright and not at an angle because the amount of liquid dispensed may not be accurate so we keep it upright and then dispense one drop of liquid the liquid should not be dispensed earlier and kept because it will lose water which is a very important component in the liquid we have to dispense the liquid only at the time when we are going to utilize the material and not remove it and keep on on the table especially under indian conditions where the temperature is very high room temperature can easily evaporate the liquid water content in the liquid and that would definitely have an effect on the final properties of the cement we do not introduce the cement powder into the liquid in parts like we do in zinc phosphate cement on the contrary we introduce the powder into the liquid in bulk and the purpose of the mixing is only to wet all the particles with the liquid and not actually kind to trying to spatulate the material the purpose is only to wet the powder so that each particle of the powder is coated by the liquid as we mix the powder into the liquid we can see that there is a glossy surface which is maintained on the mixed powder the mix is glossy and still in a state where it can be manipulated the gloss on the surface of the material indicates the availability of free ions of the polyacrylic acid which is very important for the bonding of the material to the tooth structure as the cement sets or more and more powder is introduced into the mix the surface begins to get dull which indicates the absence of sufficient amount of polyacrylic acid ions which may affect the bonding of the restoration as you can see now there is 
sufficient gloss on the surface of this mixed material which indicates that there is free ions available in the set mix to bond with the tooth structure as time passes the material would start becoming dull the surface of the material would start becoming dull as you can see it uh, right now the dullness says that the polyacrylic acid ions are being consumed in the reaction and would be less available for the bonding with the tooth structure so the restoration should be done before the material gets uh, loses its gloss the material should be picked up at this before this stage and packed into the cavity and contoured the excess material from the restorative cavity is removed using a sharp instrument and then allowed to set under dry conditions dry only to maintain the isolation and not to desiccate the surface of the restorative material glass isomer cements especially the conventional form is very sensitive to the level of water there is something called as loosely bound water and tightly bound water the loosely bound water is the water in the set mass which could be lost before the material has completely achieved its final strength which takes approximately 24 hours so any change in the water content during the first 24 hours can affect the final physical properties of the set mass so it is important to protect the restoration for the first 24 hours after being inserted into the cavity we do not allow any kind of water contamination or water loss from the restorative material so once the restoration has been placed into the cavity it is proper it is coated with a water impermeable film using petroleum jelly or cocoa butter this prevents the saliva contaminating the restorative material at the same time water from the set mass does not get desiccated either ways the property of the cement would be affected if the cement is contaminated by saliva during the first 24 hours there could be a loss of the cement particles and hence cause it to be physically of lower strength at the same time if the water that is loosely bound in the initial stage is lost by desiccation of the cement it could make uh, create cracks or craze lines on the restorative material and hence reduce the physical properties of the cement so first 24 hours the cement has to be protected using an water impermeable membrane this problem has been bypassed in the newer materials of the resin modified version of the glass isomer cements the resin modified materials have light cured ability and which sets immediately as as soon as the light is applied on the restoration the resin matrix sets and allows the glass isomer reaction which is a self setting reaction to continue within the matrix of the glass of, of the resin this prevents the loss of water or even the contamination of water during the cement setting phase so a resin modified glass isomer cement need not be protected with a vaseline layer but a conventional cement needs to be protected so for a conventional cement this uh, finishing and polishing is done only after the first 24 hours of the restoration being placed into the cavity whereas for resin modified glass isomers it could be done immediately after the material has set using the light cure unit so the important aspect of conventional glass isomer cements is that it has to be mixed in the right proportions and placed into the cavity at the time when it is glossy and it should be protected with the water impermeable membrane like vaseline and finishing and polishing done only after first 24 hours any further problem uh, okay